Okay, good morning, everyone. Good to see you this morning. If you would, let's all stand and turn to page number one, please. Page number one, My Savior's Love. We'll sing the first and last verse. <clears throat> Again, good to see you today. And Kenny Clark, we have a visitor here this morning with Wanda's husband. Good to see him today. <clears throat> I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus and Well, good morning, everyone. It's good to have you this morning. Let's go ahead and bow our heads with a prayer. Father, thank you that we can assemble ourselves here uh, this morning. We pray that your will be done uh, in all that is said and done here today. And may your people be honored and may, and may they be glorified. But Lord, we pray that it is you that we lift up. It is you that we praise. Lord, it is you that deserves all the glory. For it's in Jesus' name I ask these things. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> All right, uh, we normally sing another one. Yeah, let's go ahead and sing. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do it now. Okay, if you would take the hymnal, turn to page 349, please. Page 349, we'll sing the first and last verse. Promises, kind is the word, dear far than any message man ever heard. Pure was the mind of Christ, sinless I see. He, the great example, is a pattern for me. Where he leads, I follow. so very much brother Dave I apologize for kind of changing the schedule a little bit but uh, uh, we've got uh, we've got uh, so much to do this morning and and so uh, I'd just rather uh, have time to do it uh, first of all let me uh, uh, well let me give you some prayer requests that we're going to have and uh
First of all, uh, uh, we have we want you to be praying for Pat Hewlett. Uh, she, um, uh, I assume most of you know, she is in Community South, and um, today she has a um, uh, a scope that uh, is going to be um, exploring and finding out. Um, what's exactly going on. They already know that there's a blockage uh, in her pancreas and um, uh, they'll probably do a biopsy while they're in there. Uh, and uh, so, um, so that's what's happening today for her. And um, for those of you that don't know, she's uh, uh, jaundice and, uh, and it's because of that blockage. And so, um, She's in wonderful spirits, uh, and um, so uh, just pray that God's will be done, and um, taking it one day at a time, trying to figure out what's going on, and uh, so please pray for Pat. Pray also for um, uh, Brother Jack. Now, obviously, with me here, um, he was not able to, to, to make it this morning, and it's because of his legs. Uh, his legs are uh, are quite weak right now, and he did not think that he could actually stand and do what he needed to do, and so he called me yesterday. And uh, so, um, uh, but we need to be praying for him, as well as for his wife, and uh, and so pray for Brother Jack. Uh, with uh, and it probably has you know probably is all tied to with his back situation and. And his legs, but he's very weak as far as his legs, and and it's really giving him some fits. He is to, he is scheduled to see a doctor on uh, Tuesday, and so pray that maybe they can get some answers there. Okay, all right. Um, I also probably as uh, on the probably the minds of many of you uh, is. Um, the situation with uh, Ukraine, and um, I don't know how many of you remember are, are that we support a missionary in Ukraine, and uh, the Klein family, and um, so let me read to you uh, uh, a situation that we have uh, uh, been made aware of. And um, I don't know exactly, I don't know any more than what we have here, but uh, Casey and Sarah Klein, uh, their city was bombed, and they are now trying to flee. Uh, they have five small children and expecting their sixth. So far, they have traveled 22 hours to get to a border crossing into Romania, and now have sat in line for over 24 hours. As of this morning, they are still three kilometers away from the border with up to five lanes of cars, and it isn't moving much. Casey told our friend that, the, that they only have two more days of food and water. It has been a very stressful time for them all, especially Casey. Once they cross the border, uh, we have friends that can help them with shelter and food and, and rest before making their way to the States. So obviously, it's a very uh, serious and very stressful trying to get out. And uh, now, I have not heard. Uh, this has been two days ago, uh, so I don't know where they're at to right now. So uh, as we find out or as we are allowed to know, uh, we'll pass it on to you. But no doubt we need to pray for the Klein family, first of all. And there are many, no doubt, uh, Christians, many uh, works of the ministry there in Ukraine. And, uh, and so we pray for God's protection and that God would, through all of this, uh, uh, do his work and sort of our preaching today will lend itself towards that this morning but 
uh, in, the, in the next hour. But, and so we want to pray for Ukraine and, and what's happening there, okay? So uh, now, um, uh, also, uh, if you're not aware uh, of it, uh, uh, Brother, uh, Brother um, uh, Bill uh, had a, as you, I, don't, I don't know if I told you or not, but a stent put in uh, last week, last Saturday, huh? Oh, all right. What's that? Yeah, Bill Lawrence. And uh, I'm sorry. Um, I just assume everyone knew what I was talking about. Uh, Bill Lawrence. And uh, so we ask that you continue to pray for him. And, uh, and he is home uh, and uh, just, just needs to get stronger and better. So uh, pray, pray for him, okay? Um, if you have a prayer request you'd like to share right quickly, uh, let's go ahead and do that. Anybody? Brother Ron Jones Sr. That's, and so pray for uh, his healing and whatever's going on there. Um, no doubt the family's concerned. Somebody else, you have a prayer request? Anybody? Mary? Pray for the Merricks. They are recovering from an upper respiratory infection. And so um, pray for them as they heal. Anybody else? All righty. Well, um, uh, I believe without a, out a doubt, we have reason to pray all around us. It, it's a constant reminder you and I ought to exercise the grace that is given to us to pray and to be faithful in that. I don't see how in the world we can take a break from praying, take a break from living for, for the Lord. And so it, I think it's, it's very imperative that, that you and I make this a matter of, of concern in, when it comes to our prayer life. We in our devotions this week, we've been we've been talking about prayer and different different uh, matters and different uh, different times. And uh, one of the things we we mentioned uh, is uh, be uh, be constant in your prayer, uh, pray without ceasing, is what the scriptures say. And um, and I tell you, uh, that truly has been the case here lately. I mean, it's just always on our minds and, and with what, what, what's happening. And, and at any moment, at any time, you know, you, you catch yourself throwing up prayers because of what you just heard or what you just experienced. And, and you know, with the thing that, that's going on with Ukraine and, and uh, you know, and it, it becomes a little bit more personal because, you know, one of our, uh, you know, missionary families is there and, and uh you know, and, and if you remember, uh, for those of you that attend on Wednesday night, and maybe you heard it online, I'm not sure, but, but we had just read uh, the latest letter from them, and uh, because in, in November of last year, they were here in the States because of her help. I'm sorry, that, that's, see, no, I'm sorry, that, that, that was a different, different family. Uh, but we are aware of the fact that... Uh, the uh, with what's going on with Russia and all that stuff, uh, we have been 
thinking about the Kleins and concerned about them. And, and uh, so I want you to be uh, in prayer for them. And I hope and pray that you do practice uh, praying and obviously take advantage of it. I tell you, it's time for Christians to live their faith. Amen? And to not uh, uh, slack off, but to get real about it. And uh, don't get sidetracked. Don't, don't get, uh, uh, you know, um, distracted from doing what, what you and I as Christians are called to do. So, all right? All right. Um, well, I'm going to have a word of prayer. And, uh, and then we'll get right into our lesson today, okay? Let us pray. Father, thank you that we can assemble ourselves here. We thank you, Lord, what a great privilege it is. And Lord, I do pray that it will uh, uh, wake us up. It will alert us to the needs of, that are around. And, and, and Lord, it's, it is quite serious. It really is. And, and so I pray. I pray for the many that are uh, healed, and that, that needs healing, that we think of Ron Jones Sr., we think of Pat Hewlett, Lord, we pray uh, for Brother Jack and Sister B, and Lord, as they uh, deal with what, what they're going through, I pray also for uh, the Merricks, as the Lord, that we pray that they would also heal and be able to uh, <clears throat> breathe a lot better and get back to life. I also pray, dear God, for uh, Lord, your will to be done uh, with uh, the Klein family and, and uh, Lord, just protect them and open doors, Lord, for them and may they get to where they uh, need to go for safety. And, and, but Lord, we pray that uh, no matter where they're at, that you would just keep them safe. And Lord, we do pray for uh, Brother Bill that, Lord, you would just uh, uh, touch his life, touch his heart and make things uh, uh, get, get better for him. Uh, Lord, strengthen him, I pray. Bless him and bless his family. Now, Lord, as a group of people, we gather here this morning by choice. And Lord, I pray that your will be done and that, Lord, you, you would work in our hearts and our lives. In spite of all the, the uh, circumstances of life, help us, Lord, to, to be on track. Help us to be focused, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it is, uh, <clears throat> it is um, uh, <clears throat> no doubt a, <clears throat> a concern uh, with what's been going on. We've been sort of in, a, in a, an alert status uh, here lately, been, been, been praying a whole lot more with all that is going on. And um, so, uh, you know, as things around us happen, you know, it, it ought to increase your prayer, right? It ought to because... I mean, more things, more things to pray about takes probably longer or you pray more often because of these things and, and uh, things like that. So, so uh, it, 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 is, it, is, it is that important. Take your Bible this morning and turn to the book of Ephesians, please. And um, today I, uh, I feel like I must... Um, uh, go through what we've been learning in our Sunday school class. And, um, and so um, <clears throat> we've been going through a, a, um, a series uh, talking about the home and making home work. And, uh, and so uh, that's what we've been going through in our Sunday school class. And, and so... There's notes and an outline and all of that, and so that's what we've been using. <clears throat> and uh, uh, this morning, I will try to make it as applicable as I can to everyone, uh, but uh, <clears throat> when Brother Jack gets back, then you know his class can just take up where he left off. But uh, Ephesians chapter number 6, did I tell you that? Okay, Ephesians chapter number 6. And, um, the Bible says in verse 1, of Ephesians chapter 6, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And to that we would say amen, and we would agree. There is no debate on that. 
Next verse, verse 2 says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Bible uses the word honor here. And uh, uh, sometimes people misinterpret what honor means and uh, uh, can carry it way too far and, and uh, misunderstand. Uh, but the Bible specifically says that uh, children are to honor their parents. The word honor uh, uh, has the ideal or the meaning of respect. And, um, and so in our, in, our, in our study today, we're looking at the word respect. And that uh, respect is correct. In other words, it is the proper thing to teach in our family, in our homes, and to our children. Children ought to respect their parents, and, and obviously that's what it says. Well, uh, and I'm not going to go through everything in class, my class, but I, am, I feel like this is important for everyone this morning. Uh, honor or respect is, is not just for children. You do know that, don't you? It really isn't. And uh, so right quickly, I want to go through, there's a list that, was, that I gave to my class that we have here. And so I give it to you as a, as a whole to just simply remind you, think about it. Uh, indeed, honor is a thread that runs throughout scripture and is commanded in society and in the church and in the home. Listen carefully. First, number one, citizens are to honor their government. Do you know that? Citizens are to honor their government. Romans chapter 13 in verse number 7, it says, is render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Referring to the government. Uh, number two, Christian employees are to honor their employer. Uh, 1 Timothy 6, 1. Uh, Let as many servants as are under their yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And so as, a, as, a, as an employee, you are to honor your employer. In other words, you ought to have respect towards them. Uh, I, uh, by way of an example, uh, I was reading a letter from Heartland Baptist Bible College. Heartland Baptist Bible College is a college that we support on a monthly basis here. Uh, Heartland Baptist Bible College is a training ground for preachers. And uh, they, uh, they do a good job. And so if you have a preacher, that's a good school to go to. All right? But... They have all kinds of other, other ministries there that they train for, but specifically it is for preachers. But as those students are there in, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, uh, they also work out in the community. And there are students that work at different, different uh, uh, places. But there was this one particular place that... Uh, students of Heartland Baptist Bible College work there. And they had such a wonderful testimony, had such a wonderful uh, character, and they were such good employees that the owner of the business made a contribution to Heartland Baptist Bible College to the tune of $400,000. And I tell you, that's incredible. But it was simply, you know, because the students there, uh, you know, showed respect. They, they were good workers. They, they did. And that's, you know, and so that's just an example of that. So churches are to honor their leaders. First uh, Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted uh, worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Uh, the next one, church members are to honor one another, are to respect one another. Romans 12, 10, 
be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor referring one another. Are, are in honor preferring one another. The next one, churches are to honor their widows. Churches are to honor their widows. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse number 3. Honor widows that are widows indeed. Husbands are to honor their wives. Husbands are to honor their wives. Uh, 1 Peter 3, 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Wives are to honor their husbands. Wives are to honor their husbands. Ephesians 5, 3. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. The word reverence there lends itself towards respect or honor. So, all right. Another one. Husbands and wives are to honor their marital vows. Uh, Hebrews 13, 4. Husband, let me say it again. Husbands and wives are to honor, they are to respect their marital vows. And so uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. So uh, husbands and wives are to honor their marital vows and then what we just noticed here at the uh, in Ephesians chapter 6 children are to honor their parents children are to in every relationship and in every sphere of life respect and honor are essential but how we do and our, but how we do our, how do we in a society that is increasingly uh, praising disrespect teach our children to value and demonstrate respect. And that, and that obviously is the goal, and, and uh, it must begin in the home. And so, uh, without a doubt, that is so vitally important. So Roman numeral, no, Roman numeral one, we said, and this is uh, our class should have this, but uh, first of all, expect respect. In other words, when it comes to our children, when it comes to the home and, and what is expected, we ought to expect that uh, around our home, this is what we do. We respect, uh, you know, according to Ephesians chapter 6. Parents should expect their children and teach their children and demonstrate to their children that respect is, is what it ought to be. Uh, considering uh, the instructions given to children in Ephesians, uh, parents clearly, clearly, clearly have the obligation to expect obedience and respect from their children. Do you know that we have some uh, parents that are afraid to expect that, that are not willing to, you know, make sure that their children respect. And, and if they don't, if their children don't respect, they don't know what to do about it. And they're unwilling to do and that. That is side. Parents should expect respect. Godly parents are, are, are servant leaders in the home, and, and you are. And that is you don't lord over your children as a demanding boss or an authoritative dictator, but you lovingly serve them. One of the ways you best serve them, however, is by insisting on their obedience and respect. Parents who relate to their children as if they are peers ultimately do their kids a great disservice. And so without a doubt, your, 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 your children, and I would even go on so further to say your grandchildren, they need... You know, a mom, they need a grandma, they get a granddad or, or a dad. They don't need, a, you know, a, a peer, if, if, if I may say it like that. The words father and, uh, and fathers are used 1,517 times throughout the Bible. God instituted authority in the home and set it up for parents, not children, to lead the home. Children are not to lead the home. It is the parents that ought to be leading the home. And that's the way it ought to be. And he called, and he has called upon parents, particularly the fathers, where, there, where one is present, to provide a, a, a leadership model that, that expects uh, 
that, that expects respect. So Joshua chapter 24, remember verse 15, listen carefully. When I read this, you're going to say, oh yeah, I know. The Bible says, and if, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods in the, uh, of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so Joshua, no doubt he was a great leader nationally as far as uh, over Israel and things like that. But he also was a leader in his home. And he led his family. And uh, providing leadership in the home not only provides the direction your children need, it also helps them develop a sense of respect for authority. And that is so, so true. How important that is. Even before your child is old enough to understand the meaning of respect and honor or obedience, you are, uh, you are, you are responsible to set a tenor of respect in your home by providing a leadership that insists on respect. You know, uh, if you go on Facebook, there's always probably videos. And a lot of times, or sometimes there's a video of a, of a child that is uh, just uh, throwing a fit or, you know, being very disrespectful, but they're children. And so a lot of times the parents just ooh and eye over, oh, how cute that is. Well, one of these days, if you don't address that, that child's going to grow up. And what they do as a small little child, you know, it may be cute at one time, but at some point in time, you're going to have to say, wait a minute, honey, you can't do this anymore. And, uh, and uh, you know, if you're not careful, your little angel will turn out to be a devil. And so just be mindful of that, please. And uh, uh, obedience refers to listening to instruction and heeding it. It is coming, it is conforming to what has been required. Honor refers to valuing or, or revering someone. So our children are not to just do what we say, but also to value the relationship and to give, give respect. You know, um, as I was growing up, it was said uh, we were expected to, we were expected to obey, and we were to expected to obey. Heartily. In other words, uh, you know, my dad would not, you know, uh, he would tell me something to do, and I might say, "Okay, I will," and I'm throwing a temper tantrum. I'm, 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 you know, throwing my hands. I may be kicking the wall or kicking the dog. You know what my dad would do? He would say, "Boy, come here," and he would says, "What are you doing?" I says, well, I'm doing what you said. You know what he would say? No, you're not. Because he expected me to not only do what he says, but to do it with the right attitude. Which, by the way, comes respect. And, uh, okay, I'll do it uh, because you're my dad. I'll do it and I'll, I'll do what you say because, you know, you're, you're my authority. And, that, and that's the way it ought to be, but... Unfortunately, somewhere along the line, we kind of lost sight of that. So parents ought to expect respect, but also parents ought to teach respect. Children don't naturally exhibit respect. They must be taught. By the way, if you don't teach your children, or if you don't teach your grandchildren, can I tell you, the world will. Because there's so much out there that is teaching your children, whether you like it or not. Do you allow your child to go on Facebook and well, just know this. Somebody's teaching them. And so, you know, you, you, you allow them to, to listen to videos. And I'm not saying good or bad. Of course, there's some of it that is quite bad. But uh, I'm just saying someone's teaching them. And so that's why I think parents and grandparents ought to know what your children are listening to and who your children are talking to. Why? Because they learn respect or no respect from whoever it is. And, and so it, it's that important. Uh, and essential to that process is a parent who cares too much about their child to allow disobedience or respect. Proverbs uh, Proverbs. One, Proverbs chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Listen carefully. Hear, ye children, the instruction of a father, 
and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law, for I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments and live. So uh, as parents, we need to be teaching our children, especially this ideal of respect. One of the most loving things you can do for your child is discipline him when he disobeys. That is a loving thing to do because it is that important. I tell you, I am quite, um, well, Hebrews chapter 12. Take your Bible and turn there. Did you know that, uh, by the way, is God our example? Sure he is. He is. And if God does it with you and I, don't you think we ought to do it as well? Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 6. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 6. The Bible says this, For whom the Lord loveth, he, what? Chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. When you correct a child lovingly, properly, and biblically, your correction says, I love you too much to allow you to make wrong choices. Scripture even goes so far as to say that if you don't correct your child, you don't love them. Wow. And so it, it is quite imperative. Uh, you know, obedience ought to be expected. Respect ought to be, uh, you know, expected. And if you don't deal with that, then what is it saying? And so we ought to care for our children enough to discipline them. To, I'm not going to let this go by. I, I'm not going to ignore this. This is not right, so let's deal with this. And, and here we go. Proverbs 13, verse 24, listen carefully. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. And so, uh, if you care about your children, if you care about, you know, your grandchildren, you're not going to allow them to, uh, to just get away with it. You're going to have to say something. And maybe as a grandparent, you may not have the authority to, you know, discipline your, your, your grandchildren like maybe a parent would. But you know what? You can talk to your, your son or daughter. Hey, I just want to let you know this is what your 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 son's doing at my house, and and uh, you know how do you want me to handle this? This I, I mean we're not going to allow this to go on. And I, I can hear uh, many a, a grandparent say to their to to their son or their daughter, "I didn't let you get away with it." And so why would you expect you know? And so so anyway, things like that. Uh, it is it is that important. The word be times in Proverbs 13, 24 means timely, within a short time soon. It speaks to a parent who corrects their child early in his life when the correction can be less severe and have more impact. By the way, can I tell you, it is better to correct your child earlier than later. They respond so much better. They learn so much better. They learn the authority. When you wait until they're a teenager, can I tell you... <laughs> It's going to be tough. It will. How come? Because they've already learned so many other things. They've already uh, developed ha habits and patterns and things such as that. And so here you come with, with something else. And, and I tell you, it is, it is going to be difficult. So it is better to do it be times. In other words, early, early. By loving your child enough to correct him when he is disobedient, you help him develop a sense of respect for authority that will guide him throughout his life. Uh, how important it is. Chastening. Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. 
Hebrews 12 relates the correction or the chastening we are to give to our children to the correction of God gives to us, his children. He points out that parents typically correct only their own children. <laughs> Thus, correction is proof of a parent-child relationship. Well, look at what it says. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with, and what's the word there? Sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. And so the ideal is that here, the point that is, that is stressed here is this, that God deals with his children, not someone else's children. What do you mean, preacher? Well, God deals with those that belong to him. And that's why we have said many times that if... See, we have the great privilege as children of God, and I, and I hope and pray that I'm talking to everyone that knows the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. With that being said, I also then understand that if you name the name of Christ... If, if God lives inside your soul, then I know that God works in your life. God convicts you. He does. Without a doubt. Not, how come? Well, because of this right here is one good example. Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. God will spank you, spiritually spank you, when you and I do wrong. And I know I'm not talking to a bunch of perfect people. And so I know, outside of me knowing anything about you, I know that if you are a child of God, God spanks you. So when you don't line up with the word of God, can I tell you, God will convict you. God wants his children to worship him. That is, that is, that is what the Bible says. So when you don't, I promise you, God will discipline you. God will get your attention because he wants you to do what's right. And I can go on and on throughout the word of God. Whatever the word of God says, I know that the spirit of God will work in your life because you belong to God and God loves you. So he's not going to let you just go do whatever you want to. And, uh, and, and I tell you, so amen for that. It's based upon that relationship that a father, your heavenly father, has with his child, being a child of God. But at the same time, the Bible says, I don't chasten people that are not mine, which means this, you don't belong to God. And I tell you, that is so important as well because what that means is you're not saved. And you, people should want to get saved. Except for Ron Reagan. Who said, and I'm not afraid to die and go to hell. And that's unfortunately he's mis, misguided and, and has, has, believes a false narrative. But people can choose to do that. People can choose. I don't, I don't believe in God and I don't believe in heaven. And so therefore, I'm not afraid of hell. And so some can say that. But sadly enough, they are truly misled. And, uh, and, so, and so maybe this morning, the message is more about salvation and being a child of God. But the example is also this. Just like your heavenly father loves you, as, your, as, his, you know, as one of his children, and he will chasten you. Uh, he's not going to let you. As a, as a parent, may we love our children the same way and not let them get away with disobedience and, and disrespect. No, we're going we're gonna to address it. And so, uh, by the way, do children, as they get older, and even when they're in home, but, you know, as our children grow up, they make their own decisions, don't they? They do. Do they make always the right ones? No, they don't. And, uh, but can I tell you? Look, look, look. Not only is there a parent or a grandparent there and, and they're doing all they can to, to help, you know, but as an adult, they have to make their own decisions. They do. They do. 
even, even if it's wrong. Well, they've got to learn. They've got to learn. Sometimes people have to learn the hard way. And so, uh, but there's a heavenly father who's much, much better than you and I are in the respect he knows. And so, you, so as parents and as grandparents, we pray, God, help my boy. Help, help, help my daughter. Lord, help them to, to yield to you. Help them to listen to you and, and do what's right. Amen? Sure we do. And, uh, and so, uh, oh, by the way, did I tell you that my, my, my daughter's pregnant? I'm, I'm sorry, I just had to throw that out. <laughs> we're already preparing mentally and, and even physically. I think we were at the store this week. Do you think, think they could use that for the baby? Above? I mean, we're just, it's, we're just, you know. And I'm sure that most of you have gone through that or are or, or going through that or whatever. And so, um, but uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to what God would have. And, uh, but anyway, all right. That was a sidetrack. I apologize. Hebrews 12, 9. The Bible goes on and says this. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. Talking about, you know, that physical, you know, earthly father and, and, the, and, and the child relationship. And we gave them reverence, which by the way, we should. We should give them reverence. We should give them honor. We should give them respect. Uh, we should, you know, do that. Shall we much rather be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? And the, of course, the answer is that yes, we should. We should. Uh, you know, I mean, our earthly fathers, we, 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 uh, we gave them honor. We gave them respect. We gave them reverence. And uh, should we not, God? Should we not be in subjection to him? You better believe we should. That's the way it ought to be. That's, that's, that, that is what ought to be expected. And so not correcting your child actually causes them to lose respect for you and questions your love. When, you're, when your children are directly disobedient, you must correct them so they learn that there is freedom in submit, submitting to authority. Uh, uh, we like to think our children as angels with occasional lapses. <laughs> uh, Proverbs 22, verse 15 says this, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, except that is yours. But the Bible says that foolishness is bound in the heart of the child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. In other words, you need to correct your child. I'm just telling you that. Our children like us are born with the sin nature and bent towards doing wrong. The foolishness which uh, this verse says is bound in their hearts does not refer to childish behavior, but to willfully and obstinacy direct disobedience. The rod of correction can refer to any kind of discipline. Words of correction, corporal discipline, loss of a privilege, whatever. So that is important. Roman numeral two. Roman numeral two. Reward, respect. Reward, respect. One of the greatest and simplest ways to reward your children for being respectful is to let them know that you notice them doing right. Hey, good job. Hey, I noticed you uh, opened that door uh, for that elderly man or that elderly woman. Hey, good job. Uh, I mean, I mean, just so many ways, but, you know, rewarding them for that. Third John 4, third John 4 says this, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Aren't you, aren't you excited when, when you hear someone paying a compliment about what your child has done? Sure, sure you are. You're so proud. You're so thankful. Amen. And, and, and so be it. Boy, I tell you, you ought, to, you ought to praise the Lord, but you ought to say, hey, hey, I want to, hey, some, do you know what someone said this about, about you? And of course, you can watch them squirm a little bit, what they say. But, and then just tell them, hey, I'm so proud of you. Good job for that. Uh, things like that. 
Praise your children for respect. Praise is a powerful motivator. I tell you, we all like it, right? We all like to be complimented. We ought to say, hey, good job. We all like hearing that. And, uh, and so Mark Twain said, I can live for two months on a good compliment. When children are praised for doing what is honorable, they are encouraged to continue. And they are. Amen. Proverbs 12, uh, 25 says this, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Amen. Amen. So good. Proverbs 25, 11, A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pitchers of silver. Sometimes that fitly spoken or well-timed word is yours. Boy, just saying the right thing at the right time. I tell you, it is, it, is, it is valuable. And it can go a long ways in helping your son or daughter show honor. When you see your child exhibit respect towards someone, whether that be your son holding a door open for a lady or your daughter saying, yes, ma'am, to a teacher, strike up the band, uh, you know, let them know, good job. How important that is. Well, I got to stop. So, all right. Uh, we'll continue this probably upstairs uh, next Sunday. Uh, of course, hopefully, Brother Jack will be here. Uh, so, pray for him, will you? And um, uh, let him know uh, that you're praying. Maybe just reach out to him, see if there's anything they need or something like that, okay? All right, Father, I pray you'll bless us now as we, we uh, get ready for the next service. Lord, may your will be done. And uh, Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, help us to show respect, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye. Thank you.